Good morning. I'm here with my mom. As you can see behind me here, she's shucking corn because we're canning corn today. So come along. It's really easy. I'll show you how to do it. Our recipe for today is coming out of my old ball blue book canning book, but you'll actually notice for the corn, there's a misprint. They don't have the instructions there. So I wrote them in myself down here. You can screenshot this or I will put it in the description below. We just have a small batch that's ready. The rest of the corn is not going to be ready for probably two more weeks, but we wanted to get this put up for the winter. So what you're going to do first after you pick your corn is you're going to go ahead and shuck it all to where you end up with this. Once you get all the shucks off, try to pull as much of the silk off as possible. You can also do it with the brush in the sink if you want to, but I've just found that it really, the water just kind of pushes it back in, so. Looks good. Good right. job, Levi. Once you get them all cleaned off and all the silk's taken off, you're gonna bring them inside and rinse them real good. We've got the corn rinsed and now we're ready to cut the corn off the cob. Okay, now my mom is gonna show you how to cut it off the cob. Just cut it down. And then turn it. Now, what my grandparents always did, my grandmother always taught me, is then you take your knife and you rub it down. And if any of the last little kernels that might be left in there. Then Perfect. you just throw this in your compost heap. Now, for small batches like we're doing today with just a couple ears of corn, doing it with the knife is fine. But in a couple weeks when my mass amount of corn comes in and we're gonna be doing like a thousand ears, we're gonna need a faster way. So now my dad's gonna show you how we do it with this amazing tool, which I will link in the description below from Amazon. This goes in the drill, it's the screw. There's two parts to this tool. It has a washer on it so it doesn't go too far. This is the corn shearer. It has ridges on this end, smooth on the other. You run the ear of corn into the end with the ridges. Screw goes into corn. Corn goes in this end, and you squeeze lightly as it processes it. Done. <laughs> Isn't that the most amazing thing you've ever seen in your life? Okay, Dad, explain so, how to hold this because we forgot about this part. Uh, originally, I was holding it this way, and it doesn't let you squeeze it tight on the cob as much. So if you actually squeeze the open end, it will let you squeeze tighter on a smaller ear of corn, and that way it shears it cleaner. Perfect. And then something else I'll add is it kind of creams it some here, which doesn't bother me. But if you really want the defined kernels with none of them mushy whatsoever, you're going to want to cut it off with a knife. But it's just your preference. We're going to do a mix of the two, and that's fine with me. I'm sterilizing my jars. I bake them in the oven at 250 for 10 minutes, but you can also do it in boiling water. There's a lot of jars in here because I'm boiling and canning a lot of stuff today, not just corn. Now we're gonna sterilize our lids. I just put them in a pot of boiling water. Once it comes to a boil, shut it off. Those are good to go. Now I've got a big pot of water boiling and you wanna bring this water to a boil because that's the water that you're going to pour over your corn. Got my sterile jars here. We're gonna pack them and you wanna pack this loosely. You don't wanna pack it in tight like you do with green beans. Just loosely fill your jars. I just brought my pot of boiling water over here and we're going to pour water into each jar and we're going to leave an inch of head space. Got them filled. Now what you're going to want to do is go through and just give it a little jostle and that'll get any air bubbles that are down there to move up to the top because you can see like air bubbles in here and so on. So you're just going to give it a little jostle. Another thing that you can do is get a butter knife and just poke down in there and that helps to get all those air bubbles out. And then sometimes when all the air bubbles come to the top, you gotta add more water to get back to that inch of head space.
We got all the air bubbles out and our lids are sterilized. So now we're going to wipe all of the rims with the towel, put our sterile lids on and then put our bands on and we're ready to can them. My jars are in there and I got water in the canner. Follow your pressure canner's instructions. Mine says to put two to three inches at the bottom of the canner. Now I got my burner turned on and you'll notice that as the water inside your pressure canner starts to heat up and boil, that steam will start coming out. And this is called venting. Follow your pressure canner's instructions, but my pressure canner says to vent for 10 minutes. We are venting good, so we're gonna let this vent for 10 minutes. Okay, it's been 10 minutes, so now I'll put the weight on. And now that the weight is on, you'll notice that the pressure starts to go up. You can see how the pressure is already starting to rise. I'm at two pounds pressure now. For us here in Kentucky, we're gonna can this at 10 pounds pressure. We are at a thousand feet of elevation or below. If you're above a thousand feet of elevation, you will require more pressure. So make sure that you look at those guidelines online to follow what's recommended for your elevation where you live. And we're at 10 pounds pressure. I did pints, so we're gonna process these for 55 minutes. If you're doing quarts, that's gonna be 85 minutes. Now you don't need to stand here and stare at it for the 55 minutes, but you do want to check it every about five to 10 minutes because sometimes as you can see here, it's starting to go up a little bit. So I'm just going to adjust that down. And if it starts to drop a little bit, then you'll just need to turn the heat back up. So just make small adjustments as it's going to try to keep it right at that 10 pounds pressure. The timer went off. It's been 55 minutes. So now I've turned my heat off and I'm just going to let this cool down naturally. Don't do anything to it. Don't take this off. Don't try to wiggle it to force the air out to depressurize it faster. Just let it go down on its own. When this gets all the way down to zero, you can take the lid off. It's down to zero so we can get those jars out. Make sure to use a jar lifter tool because these things are gonna be hot. And look at that beautiful freshly canned corn. This is Silver Queen. This will be absolutely delicious. Did you just hear that? One of my lids just sealed. Over the next hour as these cool down, you'll hear the ping sound and that means that the lids are sealing. And that's it, super easy and so delicious. You'll never find canned corn from the grocery store as good as this. And that's because this canned corn from the moment we picked it to the moment it was processing in the pressure canner was less than an hour. So this is fresh and it doesn't have any time to start converting the sugars in the corn into starch. It's delicious. Let me know if you have any questions. Happy canning.